I just got a very brief look at this um, yesterday. It was like, oh, 4.0. And I just scrolled real quick, but I didn't read any of the details or look at anything like that. Initial thoughts. Just from the brief look. It looks small. It's weird. It's a bigger, but it looks smaller than some of the things they were trying to get in 323. When you think of like replication layer, big, uh, huge locations and cargo and I guess the groundwork of reputation, 323 was almost too big. And that's why it's as bad, bad as it is now. Server meshing is obviously really, really big. Um, but the fact like pyro is pyro's got a lot of locations so from there it's big but in terms of like we don't have this big like cargo update right you're gonna have all the same content you have in stanton in a slightly different way but in pyro so um but yeah the we'll see so let's take a look at it i guess <laughs> with without further ado let me actually set up this scene instead 4.0 roadmap and we'll go here all right so release view they added 4.0 because 323 is out and they're targeting q3 of this year which is well, that'll be funny. Do you think this will be out for? It'll be out right after Citizen Con, probably, right? So we have to we have to deal with three twenty three all the way through, which is not going to be very fun. She's yelling at me. Serv so they're starting out with server meshing v one. We've seen a little bit of it. Uh, I've jumped, you know, in in the the play test from Stanton to Pyro. It was relatively smooth. It had its issues. We'll see if they figure it out. I think this is a big one. We'll have to see how how big of a refactor this actually is because it's it, it shouldn't just be reworking the underlying mission system. It should be thinking about missions with lots of players in them. And we don't currently have those at the moment. So it's not just rethinking and and developing the underlying tech it's re it, it's it's everything um about missions and star citizen in general then you have the transit system refactor this matters to every player but it's just a, a tech thing behind the scenes and once it works you're not going to be bothered by it very much then you have every location in pyro mentioned here so they're putting a bunch of things on the roadmap um, padding it to make it look bigger than it actually, like, this looks like a huge patch, and it is, but we already did the Pyro playtest, so we already went to Pyro 1, 2, and 3. They're just adding 4, 5, and 6, and then moons. And let's be real here, this isn't something that we should be, like, you know, clapping you know, in crazy amounts for, this needs to be the standard for them. They need to be able to put these systems out quickly if they're ever going to reach um, some of the goals that they have. Pyro space stations, that's actually kind of the big part of the system. Um, outposts, colonialism, we've already seen what these look like. Jump points, right? That'll be the big one. Solar burst, I think they, need some, they needed some balancing from what we had. Um, but we've already seen those as well. Here's where things get interesting for me. Life support, uh, they're they're taking what we already have with engineering, adding another layer to it with life support, which would be pretty cool. There's like a you know special ship component that generates breathable gas and things like that, and you'll have to deal with it, uh, which would be cool. And then engineering. So we kind of have seen engineering. I think you know my level of excitement for that. Um, but yeah, we'll, we'll have to see because we've only really seen damage to components we haven't really seen degradation very much we haven't really seen malfunctions we haven't really seen power management as much as we should be but here's the really cool one charge and drain adding the ability for players to drain store and charge objects with power using the multi-tool it includes the ability to overcharge objects and also remove distortion damage 
which is really, really cool because you've never had the ability outside of choosing certain components that have a little bit more uh, defense against distortion damage to counter it. Now you have a way to counter people trying to disable your ship, which is actually kind of cool. Uh, Beam Citizen is real. Unfortunately, yes, in some cases, but you have a commander uh, name in your Twitch chat, so you're an elite dangerous player. So what do you, what can you say? You really can't say much either, brother. All right? Both games have their, their problems. Ours is Beam's. Yours is, um, yeah, just lack of, of content, period. Um, but good luck with your ship sales. That'll be pretty cool. So... <laughs> <laughs> I never want to shit on Elite Dangerous, by the way. Elite Dangerous is uh, 10 times the game that Star Citizen is at the moment. It's just funny when people with Elite Dangerous names make fun of Star Citizen, because, yeah. <laughs> uh, Multi-tool updates. So this is interesting. Raising the multi-tool up to the standard from Squadron 42 with additional functionality like cutting for specific scenarios, repair, and updates like improved handling, integrated UI, and the use of batteries to operate it. Are they getting rid of the um, the current multi-tool as we see it and going to the one that we had before? If any of you guys haven't seen it before, I'll, I'll bring it up for you. Uh, because I actually have it queued up, I believe, or I was just about to go through it. Let me see. Oh, I know where it is. Hold on. In case you haven't seen it before. Here it is. What was it called? The X5... Instead of multi-tool, the X5 micro multi-tool is what it's called. So it looks a little bit different, and it has three buttons on the side, and it does everything. So it already has the tractor beam, the salvage beam, and the cutting beam, I think, inside of it. And you just rotate between them. So instead of taking the attachment in and out like we have in the current multi-tool, it has all of them. Uh, it, it definitely looks cooler. I like the idea of needing all the different attachments of the current multi-tool, personally. I like the idea of we could have been crafting them. I like the idea of um, you kind of make a choice. But this is a more user-friendly, easier thing to use, things like that. Um, so... Yeah, just in case you guys didn't know, there's there's that. It, it and here's the, you know, just a look at the cutting of it. So it's all in the same thing. It looks like the cutting and salvage are almost the same. It says stored 15% material. I don't know what any of this is, but that's that's basically what I think they mean by this. Um Raising the multi-tool up to the standard from Squadron 42 with ad additional functionality like cutting, repair, and updates like improved handling, integrated UI, and use of batteries to operate it. So there are batteries in our current multi-tool, but they don't actually drain or anything like that. So we'll have to see, but I I'm not going to lie. I really like the multi-tool that we have now. I kind of don't want to see it go away, but if we go to that, it is more user-friendly and better. And then we have fire uh fire extinguisher things like that we saw those at citizen con and mfd reworks we saw at citizen con quasi grazer additional player customization and then just one ship so far the zeus now i think when you look at 323 there are a lot more features in 323 that are a lot larger than this and i think they bit off more than they can chew with 323 I might be coping here, and I think I am, but this seems more doable than 323 with cargo. They didn't do cargo. It was too much. Everything was too much. And, you know, the hope is 323 comes out and, like, 
maybe like a short PTU, 322, 323, whatever it is. Short PTU, cargo's just smooth and easy, right? Um, but this is Star Citizen. That's probably not going to happen. This might be a big undertaking, actually. Out of everything, this is the one that's going to screw everything up. And what I, what I fear for this is that this takes away time from the team that should be fixing master modes and fixing, you know, general kind of ship balance stuff. I worry with that here. And this, so, like, when we see 323, I don't know how you see it, but I see it as, like, first big step towards 1.0. And what you would hope each patch after that, it's not the same team, but the ships are involved. So they're going to have some, some, um, factor, you know, playing, they're going to play some factor in, in, in these roles. But, uh, what, what I fear is, is that 323 should be a stepping stone that each patch we should see the steps towards a better master modes experience, a better FPS experience, a better UI experience. And um, I don't know if we'll get that. And that has to be the way it is leading up to a release, right? You have to improve on the general things that we're experiencing. This might take away from that a little bit, but everything else is kind of its own little thing and that we've already seen in, in quite a good place. This is another one, same team. You know, mission different team does the UI, but the flight team has to deal with this on every single ship. This means it's on every ship. Right? That's what this means. Then you have this up here. That's scary. Server meshing. And then the two things that matter the most that work with server meshing. Right? Mission system transit. What about everything else? What about cargo? What about the party system? What about, um, I don't know. I don't know what else there is, really. Right? Well, orgs is, this is beyond this. I'm talking about specifically things that we have now that may not work with the current uh, with, with server meshing. The current stuff may not work with server meshing. Right? Yeah, Bounty Hunter V2. What happened to that? That's a good, good one. Maybe they need to do the mission system refactor before we get there. Right? Yeah, I'm talking about what server meshing might break. We know it breaks the mission system. We know it breaks the transit system. What about cargo? What about economy? What about everything? What about AI? Yeah. What about scanning across, you know, all these things. So, yeah. What about bounties, right? All these things. It's going to be interesting uh, how that plays out. So is this going to be a smooth patch? Doubt. But I don't, I feel like all of these locations, these guys kind of work on their own. And I think we should expect them to be pretty decent. We've already seen them. They've been working on them for years. They better be good, right? It's the engineering, it's the UI, it's the, the server meshing that's kind of like, oh, okay, we'll have to see, right? And then you just get additional player customization, stuff like that. And then also all the stuff that we've seen last week was added to the rum nap this week. Um, kind of go into that conversation we we're talking about before. Uh, somebody mentioned the timing of this is like just for the ship sale. And um, no, it's just they, they do this immediately after a patch goes live. They've had this cooking forever and um, just waiting for it to go live, probably for like three weeks. They could have told us this. It's just not what they do uh, for whatever reason. You don't have to like it. I don't like it either. I think they should just always tell us their intentions, but here we are. I don't know how exciting excited you guys are. I'm pretty excited. Um, may not seem like it, but it's early in the morning still. Uh, I'm pretty excited to just keep moving towards the idea that this game can actually be delivered on upon. 
And I think server meshing, I think another star system and um, stuff like that's really important. There's always things left off the roadmap that are honestly way more interesting than the uh, the actual features. Uh, think, you know, the creatures that were added to the game weren't added to the roadmap cards until very close to it being released. Nobody knew they were there until they were there, right? So we'll have to uh, we'll have to see what what kind of surprises they have as well, right? Yeah, things like quantum effects, things like, um, yeah, maybe the changes to quantum uh, travel, right? But I think again, I think that flight team has their hands full. And if you can't, if you are not happy with the state of master modes, which should be everyone, then you have to let them do that and don't push for things like quantum effects. Who cares, right? So we'll have to see. Very excited, though. 